Welcome to Council, special Council meeting for today, April the 9th. Uh, and I will call our second virtual Council meeting to order. And I will again thank the folks who've made this uh, possible. And uh, particularly want to thank people who may be watching this from the comfort of their own uh, own homes. And we, we, we feel it, was, it went pretty well. The, the feedback last week was it went quite well. Uh, but we're looking to we're always looking to see if there's things that we can do better. So uh, in terms of approval of minutes, we have none to approve. The approval of the order of business is pretty simple. Does somebody want to move the order of business as circulated? So move, Mr. Mayor, Bill Carson. Second Thank you, Bill Carson. Second, second, second by Mancini. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that is carried. There's nothing on the consent. Call for declaration of conflicts. Correspondence. Madam Clark, any correspondence on this? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor have items of correspondence and these have been distributed to members of council. Thank you. Petitions. We'll move directly to reports. Um, let me just make sure that, uh, oh, what, we're going to sound off the councillors, I guess, uh, make sure that everybody's camera is working. So we did this last week and we do this for the benefit of people at home. I'll just uh, call the councillor by district number and if you can just turn on your mic, make sure that your cameras are going, we'll be good. Councillor Stretch, are you with us? I am, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good morning and uh, greetings from District 1, Waverly, Fall River, Muscadabit Valley. Wishing everyone a, a good Easter weekend, all things considered, and the best to your families. Thank you, Councillor Hensby. Are you with us? Councillor Hensby, you're not driving into council, are you? Councillor Hensby's not with us at this point. Councillor Karsten. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Bill Karsten, uh, District 3. Uh, certainly, like Councillor Stretch, wishing everybody a very, very blessed and happy uh, Easter weekend. Uh, be strong, be safe, and stay at home. Thank you. Indeed. And we're also uh, entered into uh, Passover as well for our friends in the Jewish community right. in a very special time. Councillor Nickel, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. It is Thursday. It seems that we have to be reminded of which day of the week it is, but I'm wishing everyone a, a blessed, holy, long weekend. Stay home. Thank you. Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm online and I'm very heartened to hear uh, Dr. Strain's uh, advice from earlier uh, about the Easter Bunny being an excellent social distancer. So that was very good news for all the little ones out there. All right. Councillor Hensby, I understand you're with us now. Councillor Hensby? Yes, sir, I'm here. Can you just turn your camera and mic on so we can see you? There we are. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councillor, thank you for that. Councillor uh, Mancini. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy Easter. Bona Pasqua to everybody. Thank you. Councillor Mason. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Uh, happy Easter. Happy Passover to all of our residents. Indeed, Councillor Smith, are you with us? I am with you, Mr. Mayor. Happy to be here and everyone that's watching, friends and family, stay safe. Councillor Cleary. Hey, Mr. Mayor, how are you? Uh, Sean Cleary here from the beautiful District 9. Um, like everyone else, I want to wish everyone a great holiday uh, season. And uh, please wash your hands, stay six feet apart or two meters if you're metric. Uh, and uh, let's let's beat this thing. All right, Councillor Walker. Here, Mr. Mayor, and um, stay at home. All right, sir. Councillor Steve Adams. I'm here, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Let's just uh, keep talking so the camera can find you for a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's why everyone else is talking so much. I'm here. There he is. That's a very holy background as well, it looks like. Councillor uh, Zerowski, where are you? I'm here, Mr. Mayor. And um, hoping everyone has a safe and happy holiday. And uh, I'm here in District 12. Awesome, Councillor Whitman. 
Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Savage and colleagues. I'm here and uh, wishing everyone a happy Easter holiday and Passover. Thank you to all. Thank you, Councillor Deputy Mayor Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, wanted to uh, wish everyone a fabulous long weekend and don't forget, Day of the Blaze is home. Thank you, Councillor Russell. Good afternoon and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to, again, as everybody else says, wish everybody a happy Easter and happy Passover. Uh, reminder to stay home and have your Easter dinner virtually. Thank you, Councillor Outhead. Oh, having trouble unmuting. Sorry, Mayor. I'm here and sending best wishes to all. Awesome. Okay, that's our team. Thank you all very much. We uh, will move into uh, reports, of which there's one coming from the CAO with that 7.1.1, the QE2 redevelopment project and associated HRM property transactions. Um, Councillor, what is your wish, Councillor Mason? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll put the motion on the floor that Halifax Regional Council authorize the Chief Administrative Officer to one, negotiate and enter into an encroachment agreement for an elevated pedway across Summer Street based on key terms and conditions set out in Table 1 of the staff report dated April 3rd, 2020, and two, grant an easement upon municipal parkland between the lands of the Provincial, no Provincial Nova Scotia Museum and Bell Road as outlined in attachment uh, and identified in attachment one of the staff board dated April 3rd, 2020, subject to the acceptance of a traffic assessment and other studies as may be required by the municipal engineer and the retention of the functionality of municipal parkland as outlined in the staff board dated April 3rd, 2020. I so move. So second for that. I'll second that. Second. This is Paul. Councillor Russell, I uh, heard Councillor Russell. Uh, Councillor Mason, before you, before we start your time, uh, I'm wondering if Mr. maybe Mr. Dubay wants to speak to this. Is that okay, Councillor Mason? Absolutely. Chuck, are you uh, with us? Yes, I am, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. A pleasure to be here today. Uh, hoping everyone is staying safe and are, and are well. Uh, first of all, I I think I would uh, like to to perhaps answer a question that may be crossing people's minds. Why are we here today? Why are we today? Why can't we wait till Tuesday, for example, when there's another council meeting scheduled? We were intending to come before council last Thursday, uh, but uh, because of some additional information that we required from the province, we could not convene you last Thursday and uh, had to go to this date uh, based on conversations and uh, compromise that we achieved with the province. So uh, the province is very anxious to get a tender out uh, so that we can, you know, in part to move this forward, this project forward uh, and as quickly as possible. Now, this is the it's the major redevelopment project of the QE2 Health Sciences Centre and it's a critical part of the province's health care strategy and it's in fact the largest health care project ever undertaken in Nova Scotia's history. So for those reasons uh, we, uh, we, we, we agreed with the province that we would get this before council as soon as possible and today being that day that was, a, that was as, as quickly as we could actually achieve as a team to get all our report to get the CEO's rec uh, report and recommendation to you uh, and have this meeting. So that's why we're here today as opposed to waiting until Tuesday, until Tuesday to allow the province uh, some um, some needed time uh, to uh, keep the project moving. Uh, I will say that we've been working with the province on this for well over a year now on this large, larger project, a larger scale project. And uh, you know we have reached a tentative agreement subject for me as CAO to Council's endorsement. Uh, the province had um, summarized, the province had wanted a, the heating plant and the parking structure on the north side of, uh, of Summer Street, which we deemed problematic and had deemed problematic from the get-go. So this new proposal places the heating plant on the uh, on the west side of Summer Street, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say the north side of Summer Street. Actually, the west side of Summer Street. Uh, so this proposal places the heating plant on the west side of of uh, Summer Street, while the parkade would be to the north of the museum, uh, avoiding any impacts to the Bengal Lancers. 
uh, which is an, a very important not-for-profit organization providing uh, needed social services to residents. And of course, the Wanderers grounds where we have the, the Halifax Wanderers football club, soccer club, uh, playing in that. The original proposal would have actually impacted both of those organizations. So, um, you know, this was an important element uh, that we wanted to uh, we wanted to avoid. This compromise achieves those objectives in terms of not having an impact on the Wanderers grounds and not having an, an impact on the Bengal Lancers. It also uh, protects some green space at the corner of Bell Road and Summer Street, which will be some of that will be retained. And we also avoid the potential of a three story parkade over Summer Street that is now being replaced by a pedway providing in, uh, unimpeded access to the hospital site uh, and it's far less of an imposition on the public realm and the streetscape in that area. So this uh, negotiation uh, took a number of a number of weeks. Uh, you know, there were literally 10 options uh, considered through this exercise of, of, re of reviewing uh, the initial uh, proposal by the province that came to us a couple of months ago. And at this at this point, uh, or at that point, we started having numerous meetings. Uh, the province uh, and uh, and uh, HRM operated in good faith. Uh, I have to give kudos to the province, or specifically Paul LaFleche and his team for uh, taking a look at and, and opening everyone's minds to the various options. I can tell you that they engaged their consultants, uh, looked and spent quite a bit of time and a lot of money looking at various options to reconfigure the site to allow this particular compromise to come forward before council and before government. Uh, I also want to thank uh, certainly the team that has been doing a lot of heavy lifting on this, particularly Kelly Denty and, and Denise Schofield, uh, who have been working the long hours on this, uh, along with myself and Brad Anguish, Director of, of, of public, uh, Transportation and Public Works, and of course, John Traves, you know, our municipal solicitor. So I want to thank the entire team for the great work they've done on this. And uh, we're seeking today your endorsement of the recommendation, of the approval of the recommendation, which allows the CAO to complete negotiations, complete uh, the contractual agreements, uh, and to allow that project to proceed in the matter that's described in the in the uh, CEO report to council. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Jacques. Just a reminder to all councillors, please leave your cameras on. It makes it easier when we transition to you and uh, turn your mics off when you're not speaking. Councillor Mason, do you want to start us off? Yes, please, Mr. Mayor. So uh, thank you very much, Jacques and staff. Uh, what's in front of us is uh, the province has proposed a significantly different design to address the parking garage issues that that were very evident uh, on Summer Street. And, and you know, I want to start by acknowledging we all want a new hospital. And, and for me, I've gotten a couple of emails even in the last 24 hours from people who questioned whether or not the hospital should be in the in the city center uh, if we're if people have concerns about parking and, and traffic. And of course, I think the the major hospital should be in the city center. It's a teaching hospital. You want it near the university. You want it within walking distance of all those other services. Uh, and, and obviously there's still a huge investment made in facilities that aren't going to move like the IWK and the Grace Maternity and all that. So it is the right place for it. And I want to thank uh, the province for uh, listening to to the public. I think what's what's interesting is that what's happened demonstrates that when you engage with the public and when you listen to the public, you end up with a, a better design with, that we have ended up with a less impactful, uh, less damaging uh, plan than, than was originally proposed. So, you know, I don't want anybody to, to think that I'm saying that I think it's a great design. I, there are issues with it still, uh, but it is set back from Bell Road. Uh, it is 40% smaller than what was originally uh, proposed and no longer will require uh, to purchase uh, municipal parkland to be built. And, and as the CAO said, it will not damage Halifax uh, Junior Bengal Lancers or the Wanderers Grounds ability to continue to function. So those are all huge wins. Uh, I see what happens next is this is a, a test of the province's ability to build good buildings that fit into an urban context. So uh, they're about to spend over a billion dollars on hospitals on the VG and the and the QE2 site on the Halifax Infirmary site. And, and what we need to see from this first baby step 
is high quality design, that it can't be cheap tilt up concrete. It has to be something that respects the historic setting of the common, the buildings around it, the, the uh, design standards that have kind of evolved over time around setbacks and brick and greenery and design that you see in all the buildings that have been built there the last 40 years. So uh, what I hope is that this will give the public a lot of confidence that the entire billion dollar construction of many buildings across two sites in the core of the city is going to be of that high quality. So this is a chance to demonstrate that. Uh, you know, I want to point out to council and to the people who are watching that the municipality is not being asked to approve a parking garage. We're being asked to approve a pedway across the street and a driveway across uh, some municipal park to, to Bell Road. Uh, and I am going to support this motion with, with some reluctance, as I've already outlined. Uh, I, I want to note that this design is not final. And we know we've received a letter uh, from at least one other uh, uh, possible constructor of a parking garage that has an alternate solution. And I hope the province, when they tender this, will be open to other solutions being brought forward as long as they meet their requirements for space and, and come in under budget. Because I think that there is a potential for private sector creativity that could lead to an even better solution. So I hope they're open to that. Uh, and uh, I guess just to close, Mr. Mayor, uh, that uh, there has been no public engagement on the changes to this hospital plan. So we, we've gone through several years of engagement to get to the point that there was a conceptual plan with a bunch of options. And now what we see in this report is a significant change on where the heating plant's going to be, where the cancer care and ambulatory care are going to be, how tall the building will be on the corner of Roby. I'm not in principle against any of those proposed changes, but none of that has gone to the public for engagement. Uh, we haven't talked about landscaping. We haven't talked about materials. We haven't talked about a mitigation plan for the museum. We haven't talked about uh, what the it's going to feel like to walk down Bell or Summer Street when you have a 14 story building there uh, where you used to have the Queen Elizabeth High. So I would encourage the province that this is just a first step and, and you need to come back to the public and you need to talk more about what's going to happen before you finalize those plans and put it out to tender. So uh, I, I do think this is a win for the city. I think it is it no longer hurts the existing use is it is not perfect, uh, but it is far better. So I am going to support it. Uh, I would ask for council support. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mason. Um, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd forgotten that I'd sent in my note to Laura. I thought it was further down the order. Um, I just, uh, I think Councillor Mason summed it up fairly well. I, I did have three questions um, for staff. Um, in the conversations with the province, um, do we have any sense at all? I mean, it doesn't, uh, the report seems, um, you know, kind of open-ended on it. What happens to the old, to the existing museum parking uh, lot and what happens to the uh, par parking the property down at the VG site? Thank you. Jacques, do you want to speak to that or your, or your staff? I'll leave it to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the existing parking lot, uh, that would be to the um, east, I think, if I get my geography, uh, geography right, at the back of the museum. Is that the one you're talking about, Councillor? Yes, the existing yeah, museum parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, that will stay there in the time for the time being. Um, the province we have had we've had some discussions about that with the province. We are looking, uh, you know, as once the barricade is built and once uh, traffic <laughs> is under, better understood there, uh, given the existing forms and traffic movements, um, that space may or may not be left as a parking lot. And we need to, you know, we've agreed that uh, that at some point after the construction is over and we see what what does happen there, uh, we will have further discussions with the province and there's a willingness on the province to discuss the use of that land, and whether in fact it's required uh, simply because there will, will be a parkade to the front of the museum and possibly that can be used for the museum as opposed to that back parking lot. So that's, um, that's uh, the answer to that, I believe. The other question, I'm sorry. The VG property down uh, further further down, which will be surplus. Like uh, the the lens I'm looking at is, I mean, there's there's an har there's a harm here to the common green space. Do we have opportunity to recapture green space elsewhere? Here? 
Uh, we do. Uh, there are opportunities uh, going forward, uh, we think, and we've had some conversations with the province on that, but there's, there's, we have not, not yet settled on any particular decision that we can, or, or proposal that we can bring back to Council at this time, but there's, there, are, ha there have been some active uh, conversations about that with myself and Mr. LaFleche and our respective teams. I don't know if Kelly or Denise would like to make comment on that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's Denise Schofield, Director of Parks and Recreation. Right. What I, I, I would add to that, uh, Mr. Mayor, is, is until <clears throat> construction is complete and the services move to the new uh, Halifax Infirmary site, that parking lot will, will need to be used for the, the VG, the Centennial, the Dixon, the, that kind of thing. And as the CAO indicated, the memorandum of understanding that we have between HRM and the province, albeit you know 10 years old now, does contemplate at some point in the future having discussions about um, whether there's an opportunity to convert that back to green space so that those discussions will continue. Um, but as we say, you know, for the foreseeable future, while the construction is going on, those will all continue to be used for the buildings that, that remain. Okay. Uh, my other question concerns, and this is something I raised with the province when they were in to present to us, um, the E-Pass program um, about trying to get actually their parking needs down less as well as the needs on our transportation system. Did they, have there, has there been any conversation with them about um, actually reducing, incre increasing transit ridership of their employees through E-Pass? Uh, yes, there has been conversations, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, the councillor. We have, uh, we're, we'll be continuing those conversations. Obviously, the pandemic arrival has uh, slowed those conversations down a bit. Other other priorities are taking precedence, but we certainly intend to continue that those conversations going forward. Good, because that is a, is an absolute win-win where we have a transit system and a program and they have a, park, a parking need. So, I mean, the two of us, we should definitely be working together on that. I did want to just plug, because I, I expect that there's probably some, uh, uh, I'm not sure where my time is, Mr. Mayor. Um, I expect seconds. there are some, sorry? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh, I'll, I'll come back. Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Austin. Councillor Cleary. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, so, and, and thanks, uh, 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 Mr. Dubé, for those uh, answers. Uh, and, and thanks to uh, Way Mason for his initial comments. Um, you know, this is not as bad as it could have been, uh, but uh, he's right, it's certainly not perfect. So, um, given that this is, uh, I guess, so far the, the preferred concept, um, and there is, as I understand it from a conversation I had today, uh, you know, possible that it could still be on the other side of Summer Street. Um, we are, are we uh, still negotiating? Are we still open to the idea of giving up some of that land on Summer? If another, if a better proposal comes along that could keep all the facilities on the other side of Summer Street uh, uh, across from the museum. Also, um, you know, things like uh, buffers, facade improvements, public art, any of those kind of things. Do we have leverage uh, in, in either any of our planning uh, uh, rules in terms of the land use bylaw that we can work with? And if not, um, as we're negotiating over this pedway and over the easement, can we discuss those kind of things as part of the negotiation uh, uh, if, if we amended uh, this, this motion to say so? The other thing is the impact uh, reading the report, the impact on the driveway on Bell in particular. Um, what, I guess, what uh, leeway do we have in uh, restricting or advising them uh, from our traffic authority on the flow of traffic in and out of that driveway uh, so that the bike lane and the uh, sidewalk remains as safe as possible as we're going to be increasing, you know, assuming, assuming these are hundreds of spots uh, probably dozens of cars going in and out every hour. Um, we certainly wouldn't want that to impact on the safety of our active transportation infrastructure. So those three uh, questions, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the Councillor, I will address the first one in relation to giving up land. And I'll, I'll perhaps invite uh, Kelly to speak to some of the uh, planning uh, rules and regulations. And I'll also talk a little bit about the, about the, tra the uh, traffic authority, and I believe we referenced it in the report. Um, 
in terms of giving a plan, you know, certainly we already signaled to the province that we're prepared to, you know, look at other options should they should any come forward. Uh, we had some conversations with them already in terms of uh, looking at uh, everything being on the current side of the QE2 site uh, that we were prepared to um, perhaps narrow up uh, Summer Street. Uh, we were prepared to have different turning radiuses and, and those kinds of things. But, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier in my, in my comments, you know, the province has spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money looking at 10 options already, uh, actually 11 options, including uh, one they had previously. Um, so every option has been examined and they've settled on this one for a variety of reasons. Uh, there's a lot of reasons associated with the actually delivery of healthcare and services within the hospital and how things connect up. Uh, viewscapes from, from patients' rooms, from cancer treatment areas, for example, and those kinds of things. So uh, we're pretty, quite confident that this is the option that probably serves, uh, as you say, not a perfect option necessarily from all angles or all perspectives, but from a clinical care perspective and from a flow of people, both pedestrian and uh, vehicular, this is probably the best compromise that anyone could achieve at this particular juncture, given the time frames that the province is on and given the significant amount of work that's gone into uh, coming up with this one. Uh, so yes, we're prepared to give up land uh, should they come back with uh, a revision subject to their assessment of the responses to the RFP. Um, in relation to the movement of traffic, the traffic authority will have uh, a lot to say and have be making you know, decisions around how this proposal, how entrances work and how the traffic will flow. So you can ensure that that will happen. Um, perhaps Kelly could comment on the, on the sort of the planning uh, uh, issues and what leverage we may have or not in those in those in those areas. Kelly. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, relative to the planning pieces uh, as provincial lands, the municipalities land use regulations do not apply. So in terms of the, the question about leverage and uh, what we could do to force their hand, no, we wouldn't have that authority. But in every conversation that we've had with them, there's been an intent to have a, a high quality design. So we would expect that, that those uh, design principles to be advanced through the process. And as they bring on a P3 contractor, they would be looking to do that. And in terms of the, the schedules that are attached to this, uh, to this staff report, a P3 contractor might come in and, and, and make some changes. These are really just intended to be conceptual, so I, I, I wouldn't want to suggest that what you see here is what's going to be realized. I think there's a lot of push and pull to come and a lot of, uh, lot of um, detail through design to, to come later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, next we would have Councillor Hensby. Hello, Mr. Mayor. I have a couple questions either for uh, CAO or for uh, Kelly. Uh, in regards to the being provincial property, um, would it have any height restrictions? You know, are, what we see is a conceptual drawing or layout of the buildings being proposed, but we have uh, no real uh, guarantee that's going to be the height or configuration of them because they're exempt from some of our planning rules. So is there any height restrictions on those properties? It's a question that uh, Councillor Cleary asked about the access off of Bell Street. Will they be requiring left-hand turning capacity to be built in there? Because I see there'll be a traffic issue created there. And we're not giving up nothing now on Summer Street. So none of the road reserve of Summer is being affected as was one of the original proposals was to look at narrowing Summer Street and perhaps reconfiguring the garage on one side. And also with the letter received from the other developer that Council Mason referenced, would that developer have an option to provide an alternative to the province in regards to the tender call? And if that's the case, what we're approving today is only conceptual, not a guarantee that we the layout. It just has some clarification on those <clears throat> points. Thank you, Councillor Jacques. <clears throat> well, I would certainly defer to uh, Mr. Mayor to Kelly on those points. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with respect to the height, as, as it would be a land use matter, no, there would be no height restriction on the property, to be clear. Uh, again, I don't have any reason to believe that you would expect, uh, you know, much taller buildings. They are sensitive to the needs of the area and in particular flight paths and the need to, uh, to operate the, uh, uh, the medevac in that area. So I think they're, they're looking to that and that, of course, would restrict them naturally. 
Uh, with respect to the access on Bell Road, there's still a detailed traffic study that has to come and then has to be reviewed by the municipal engineer. And the municipal engineer does have the authority in terms of how the uh, how the building and the facilities would interact with our streets. Uh, so there's a lot of detail there that that's yet to, to happen that we would look at. And in terms of the, the letter from the uh, from the other proponent, uh, I think Mr. Dubay mentioned earlier that this is a, a tender call. There's nothing that's going to, to, to hem anybody in one way or the other. This clearly is the province's uh, concept, but there's no reason to believe that uh, the other proponent's uh, proposal, you know, would be off the table. So I think everything is in play. And again, it, it would come down to the province to make that final decision. I was kind of wondering, though, for instance, the Dartmouth General uh, Hospital, when we had an opportunity there when I was a member of the board, we built an additional floor on that building uh, with the air, airline plug-ins and the electrical plug-ins all ready to go. So when they needed to outfit an additional floor, they had the capacity. So would they be allowed to perhaps build extra capacity on site that it down the road if they need additional floor to, at least the shawl of the building will be there already? They haven't indicated that that's their intent, but uh, I would suggest they would be uh, they would be permitted to do that, certainly. Councillor Hensley, thank you. Um, Councillor Stretch. Thank you very much, Your Worship, and uh, thank you, uh, staff, and to Councillor Mason for bringing this forward. Uh, I as well will be supporting uh, the motion. I, I recall a number of, uh, or a few months ago now, when uh, the kerfuffle happened about uh, uh, varying opinions as to how this should come together. And I was so encouraged when our provincial uh, counterparts uh, visited the council chamber a month or two ago, and it showed a real, uh, a real desire to work together. So, uh, Jock, uh, to you and your staff, uh, uh, good job, I say. And uh, as it relates to compromise, uh, uh, that has to be at the heart of uh, many political decisions. I also want to echo what Councillor Mason said regarding the opportunity for the province to uh, uh, construct something that fits in this community, all things considered. And now we know how important, uh, uh, you know, in, in the current situation that uh, investment in our health system uh, is, uh, but at the same time, uh, consistency with the surrounding community and uh, something that is meaningful will be so important here as well. Uh, Kelly, you mentioned a moment ago that, uh, and I just want to be clear because uh, as Councillor Hensby referenced, there was uh, a letter that came in from uh, another potential uh, um, construction company. Uh, is this and I know the province wants to get started, but is this actually a tender put out with specifics or is it more a request for proposals? Because those are two different things in my mind. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, the council is quite right. I believe it is a request for proposals as a, as a instead of a specific uh, tender. They are looking at a certain quantity and type and style and, and, and needs that would uh, need to be met so yeah there's there's flexibility inherent in it and i believe they'll be issuing a new tender call okay that's wonderful uh, i as well are very pleased that uh, the bengal answers and uh, the good work that the good work that they're doing in the community will not be compromised and uh, heaven forbid as it relates to the wanderers grounds that uh, that good musket of valley sod would uh, be compromised either so fully support of your worship thank you thank you very much no I'm on council. What the heck? Are you? Okay. Um, <laughs> it's okay to mute your voice. Uh, just keep the camera on, folks. Uh, Councillor. Um, uh, Sam from Breton. Is Sam from Breton? <laughs> Councillor. Uh, uh, kind of, I'm glad to hear that people are still conducting their life. You have to do that from home. Councillor Nickel. <laughs> Thank you, and um, thank you for that little intermission, Councillor Austin. So I, I guess I, I share everyone's concerns that's been said so far. This is a compromise at, at the end of the day, but we're only being engaged because of the pedway piece over Summer Street, and I wanted to get that clarified. And to Kelly's response just recently where she said it is because the time crunch is that the RFP is going out, but we're not sure if the RFP is for a construct to a for a design build. I just wanted to get that reaffirmed. And um, Denise said that we are in a 10 year MOU with the province, but that is not going to supersede or create problems with the fact that they still have to follow construction mitigation and planning rules and regulations, is there? 
I can take that if you like. Go ahead, Kelly. Uh, uh, so yes, I, I do believe that the Park 8 is a, is a DBFM model, so the, you know all of those details will come through that process. And with respect to that MOU, MOU is really mostly about joint planning. There would still be the expectation that the province uh, enter into a construction mitigation plan with us, and lots of detail to come on that as, as construction proceeds and advances. Uh, disruption is obviously going to be huge in this area, and, and we recognize that. So lots of close working relationships to come. That. Councilman Nicola, are you on mute? I keep clicking and it keeps going back on mute. You're good now. <laughs> so, yeah, so thank you for pointing that out. And so I just, those were my concerns. It is a large project and it's going to be ongoing. And um, Jacques referred to timelines, but we don't know what the timelines are to begin construction at this point with all that's going on, do we? Uh, believe the uh, so the park aid is is a near term and Denise feel free to to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong but that is that is a first stage so they need to do that because they need to to replace the existing park aid so they need to bring that park aid down and they've got to have this one in place so that one would be as soon as possible hence the urgency of this matter right because they need to get that park aid uh, uh, in place to replace what's going to be lost when they demolish the one on Murphy Street so that will happen sooner and then the rest of the build out. Yeah, I don't have that construction schedule in my head, but obviously it's it's uh, it's it's imminent. I'm just thinking of the general public, you know, watching this, and certainly they would be looking to see what the first um, piece of construction would be. So you're saying it's the park aid, okay? Thank you. Yeah, and that, I I will just reiterate that that's absolutely correct. The 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 500 um, 512, I think it is stall arcade, which is north of the museum that they're proposing to build, that is the first piece that needs to be done because, as Kelly said, the parkade that's on Rolby Street, they're, they need to, they're taking that down to, in order to build one of the buildings. The thousand stall parkade that's on um, proposed for on the site of what is now the CB, the old CBC site, that will be part of the, the P3 construction. But the first piece of work that the public would see would be this um, smaller parkade north of the museum. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Councillor Nicol, uh, Councillor uh, Russell. Thank you very much. I am uh, I am also uh, pleased with the report that we have back. The new design is far superior to what we saw. I'm glad that they were able to fit nearly everything on the uh, current site and I, I appreciate all of the effort that has gone into that. I'm looking at the recommendation and it simply talks about the pedway but it doesn't talk about what's at the end of the pedway. Are we able to indicate somehow that the parking structure would be at the end of that or or put any other parameters around that? And I recognize that there is the municipal provincial relationship that happens with that. But I'm wondering if we can say you were allowed to do a pedway if. I can I can speak to that somewhat. I mean, the pedway is intended for uh, the parking structure to connect to the, the main hospital complex. So there'll be an encroachment agreement around that. So what you're seeing is really part and parcel of the entire proposal. So it, it's not a pedway to another facility. It's a pedway to connect to the to the hospital structure. Not sure if that answers your question. Uh, it it does. I was simply looking to see if we could put something more around that, but you have answered it absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Zorowski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, again, thank you for all the work that's been done, staff, uh, in order to get this up and running. I guess I'm still trying to understand um, our role in this. Uh, we're by far the largest municipality in Nova Scotia. And the hospital is in the heart of Nova Scotia, which of course is where you'd want it uh, to be. But so many of our other services are going to be affected by it, including transportation, mm -hmm. including uh, how we develop other uh, developments in and around the downtown area of HRM. How much of a role are we going to play in uh, determining what this looks like? Are we on the outside and are, are we kind of like the reporters surrounding Donald Trump that we have to agree with uh, the president and, and tell him how wonderful he is in order to get even some small changes done because 
what I'm hearing is uh, this isn't a great deal. This is just the best that we could do, and it's better than the lousy deal that we were getting before. And it took us a lot of hard work to get that. So I guess my question is, how much on the outside are we? How much can we influence at what this looks like and what the final outcome will be, in spite of the fact that it's sitting in our bailiwick? Mayor, uh, could I make a couple of comments on that? I know I asked Kelly to, to engage as well on this. Um, you know, first of all, uh, thank you for the question. Um, <clears throat> the relationship with the province is a strong one between HRM and, uh, and uh, TIR in the province of Nova Scotia, generally speaking. Uh, our experience with uh, the province uh, in terms of design and design discussions around this hospital have been quite positive. Uh, they have they've engaged some of the best architectural minds in the country on this project. Uh, they also have an in-house architect uh, who we've been working with directly, Kelly and myself and Denise and others have been having ongoing conversations with, uh, with uh, their architect and along with the rest of their, their engineering team uh, and their design team. So we're quite confident that those conversations and that collaboration will continue going forward. So we do appreciate the fact that there have been some uh, some folks have been offering up that this may look like a utilitarian building of some sort uh, uh, from some other era, and that is not the case. Uh, you know, certainly the parkade and, and the rest of that facility is being well designed. Uh, the architectural integrity of the development is being uh, certainly well protected and well considered as, as they go forward. So on that, Mr. Mayor, I'd ask Kelly perhaps to weigh in as well. Thank you. Kelly? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't, I don't know that I have too much to add to to what the the CAO just said. I mean, if you're asking about authority, uh, no. To be clear, the municipality does not have authority over the provincial government. But again, every indication that we have is that you know there is an intent to do a high quality, well designed building. Uh, that is a massing model that you see attached to the report, so that that needs to be considered. Uh, but our land use rules do not have authority over the problem. Right, they, they they don't. But again, uh, we would expect them to to come up with a high quality design, and every indication has been that they will come up with a high quality design. And remember, there will be a P3 uh, P3 proponent on this who will have their own ideas. And uh, the province's intent too is to ensure that the the clinical practices, the requirements of the hospital, are adhered to and maintained as well. So that is also a, a primary consideration of them. Councilor Zaroski. Yes, th uh, thank you for the response, and, and it's uh, heartening to hear. Uh, the, my, my only caveat would be we had to go down to the mat to make sure that it wasn't, uh, and I'm not referring to Councillor Whitman, um, that, that we had to, uh, in order to get uh, what was obviously a horrendous design, we had to pull out all the stops we could in order to get this slightly better design. So. Uh, just a note of uh, caution and concern out there on my behalf. I, I really do appreciate the work that uh, uh, you are doing and staff is doing to, to realize this. And um, I'm hoping that the province will, as you say, build something that is not only a wonderful medical facility, but also integrate well into the city. Um, I, I guess you're probably more hope, hopeful that will occur than I am. However, that having been said, thank you for your response. Thank you. <clears throat> I feel compelled to weigh in a bit too here, Councillor Zorowski, just we have a very strong relationship with the province right now, as evidenced by the fact that some of the uh, funding formulas that they've agreed to in the last couple of years on our bike lane network of $25 million, and also on the Windsor Street and also the Port Solution, these are not the kind of things that happen. Your mic is on mute now, Mr. Mayor. Good, thank you for that. I was just about to check that. I was just gonna say that I felt compelled to suggest that our relationship with the province is always issues, but right now, uh, if you look at the bikeway network uh, proposal that the province supported, uh, which they might not have done in the past, to the Windsor Street interchange and others, we have a great relationship with the province on major projects. And uh, certainly I would say through COVID-19, Minister Porter has been very responsive as well as the Premier. So. That's uh, a good question. I feel very comfortable with the relationship we have. We'll never get everything we want, uh, but we work together. Thank you for the question. Councillor Austin, do uh, you want to go again? Oh, 
there we go. I think I think we're good now. Uh, the orange juice emergency on this end seems to have been resolved, so I think I'm good now. Um, so the, the piece I wanted to just kind of conclude with, and I know this is a challenge like that is not unique to the province. Um, it, we also have it too. I mean, uh, building my stuff, it, co it costs extra bucks. And, um, you know, when you look at this site in particular, I mean, this is better. I think Councillor Mason is absolutely correct. Um, we've resolved most of the real negative municipal impacts that we we're worried about, but this is still not um, a great fit in terms of that urban design. What sort of thing are we going to have fronting on the commons? Well, potentially two parking garages and a power plant. So from that kind of urban design city building perspective, uh, there's a lot to be afraid of, of what this could look like. And so, I mean, where, where I mainly want to go with this is, uh, I think this is a case where we uh, we need to think outside the box. Um, the province does. I suspect there's some of our provincial counterparts tuned in. So I just really want to plug the potential here to do something really innovative with that parking garage. Like, let's not just do a business as usual ugly concrete thing, the cheapest outside the box option. This is a prominent site that's viewed from blocks and blocks away across the common. And I, I did send a slide through um, just to try and uh, spark a little bit of inspiration. Uh, I'm wondering if Phil could pop that up uh, from Kansas City. Since we don't have Elmo right now. <laughs> that Phil, is, uh, is that something? Can we do that, Phil? So that, believe it or not, is a parking garage in Kansas City. Um, it's net right in the middle of their downtown near their library. And it's about the only time I think I've ever seen a parking garage where it's been like, man, that's pretty awesome. So uh, they're talking a multi-story building, fronting right on the common um, for, for an, it cost a few extra bucks, but in the grand scheme of a billion dollar project to make this something that is actually uh, turning a lemon into, le into lemonade that enhances the city and is something we can all be proud of. Um, you know, th there are options here and public art might be a great way to do it. Um, if you want to chuck on the uh, Leonard Cohen bill from Montreal, there's another great use of a big blank wall. So there, I mean, you could Google Montreal, you get this shot and, I'll, and a lot of them, and all it is is a giant blank wall. So I think with, with the parking garage, I would really, really encourage our provincial counterparts to take the opportunity to think outside the box and leave us something here that we can all be proud of as a city rather than something we look across the pond and say, oh, geez, that's ugly. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. All I can say to that is hallelujah. Exactly. Let's not wait for a miracle here. Let's uh, put our creative minds to work. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Outhead. Um, thank you, Mayor. And, you know, great comments by everyone and great work by everyone on this. But let's let's try and end this on a positive note as well. Um, you know, because we often criticize folks for when we build something or announce something that everybody picks it apart and puts a negative spin on it. What we have here now is a huge project being undertaken by the province and one that is long overdue if anybody set foot into the VG in the last 10 or 20 years where it's not safe, it's not clean, the water's not good, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something that I'm actually quite happy to be part of. And yes, it'd be nice if the parking lot looked a little nicer and this sort of thing. But uh, but my gosh, folks, uh, we're, we're, this is a huge project that's going to make our province uh, safer and the conditions that people uh, go into now so much better than what they've been dealing with at the uh, at the VG. So I hope we'll end this on a positive note and be, uh, and be very happy to see this development in our city. Thank you, Councillor. Seeing nobody else wishing to speak, are we ready for the question? Question. Question. All right. Clerk, call the roll. Remember to make sure that your uh, your mute is off when uh, you're voting. Councillor Stretch. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. We're voting for the motion. Councillor Hensby. Affirmative. Affirmative. Councillor Kirsten. For the motion. Councillor Nickel. Yes. Councillor Austin. In favor. Councillor Mancini. 
Councillor Mancini? Yes. Councillor Mason? For the motion. Councillor Smith? For the motion. Councillor Smith? For the motion. Councillor Cleary? Yay. Councillor Walker? For. Councillor Adams? For. Councillor Sarowski? For. Councillor Whitman? I'm in favor. Deputy Mayor Blackburn? I vote yes on the motion. Councillor Russell? For the motion. Councillor Outhit? With pleasure. And Mayor Savage? For the motion. And hearing no dissenting votes, I declare the motion carried. Thank you. I just got a note. Can everybody, uh, what did I just say? Can everybody, um, what, do I, what do you ask me to do? Turn off the cameras? Corey? No? Uh, yes, please, Mr. Mayor. We're trying okay, to Phil. Uh, correct a, a technical issue. Okay. So just turn off your cameras if you would. Is that me too, Phil? No, you're fine, Mr. Mayor. Okay. David, can you turn your camera off? Okay, can we continue, Phil? Or? Yes, fantastic. Okay. Thank you, sir. So that motion uh, carries. We have nothing in camera. We will go to notices of motion. I have Councillor Hensby. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and, and thanks for sharing my birthday with all you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, take notice that on the next regular meeting of Regional Council to be held April 14, 2020, I'll introduce a motion to approve an amendment to review the definition of municipal parkland with consideration that standalone bulk facility structures throughout the municipality and not be deemed parkland as per bylaw P600, respecting parks. Thank you. That should be a request for a report, Councilor Hensley. Whatever it takes. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Whitman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Savage. Take notice that at the next meeting of Halifax Regional Council, I intend to introduce the following motion. That Halifax Regional Council acknowledge our support for all HRM staff and thank them for their unwavering service in these difficult times. And the reason is, Council should acknowledge on the public record our appreciation of the dedicated and diligent work our staff have done and continue to do in these very trying and challenging times. Thanks. This motion is an opportunity for all members of Council in an open forum to demonstrate our support. They certainly deserve it and the outcome sought is unanimous Council support. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else notices of motion? Colleagues, before we adjourn, I just want to read this, um, I guess particularly for those of us on the Dartmouth side, so blessed uh, that uh, the Dartmouth General Hospital has put out a note, celebrate Dartmouth General Healthcare workers, show your support for our Dartmouth General staff, clap, cheer, and get loud, Thursday, April the 9th at 7 p.m. on your balcony or front step. So if you're particularly on the Dartmouth side, get out on your balcony, uh, safely distanced, and show support for the great workers at the Dartmouth general colleagues there being no other business i'll accept a motion to adjourn from councillor nickel i so move thank you we come back on tuesday thank you thank you all bye thank you have a great weekend put it on again